Assalamu alaikum. Yesterday, we learned the importance of physical cleanliness in Islam. As our body requires regular cleaning, a human soul requires cleaning too, and praying worse that way. So today's topic is salah or namaz. I request you all to refer to my last year's Ramadan video about salah to understand the basics first. Disclaimer, the only aim of these videos is to provide information on Shia Hakam and its importance. We do not aim to mock or disrespect any religious sect or their beliefs. So let's get right into it. Let's first understand the obligatory prayers. Obligatory or wajib prayers are the ones that every Muslim is obligated to perform and the abandonment of which leads to divine punishment. And when they're not performed in their due time, it gets obligatory to perform the qada, that is compensations. Prayer obligatory on a Muslim are daily salah, the daily five salah that we already know about, including the Friday prayers, salat al jamaah which is wajib al taqiri unlike wajib al like fajr, dhuhr, asr, maghrib, isha. Salat al-Ayat, al-Ayat prayer which literally means the prayers of science is among the obligatory prayers that Mukallaf people must perform upon the occurrence of certain natural events. Its performance is to acknowledge that these events are signs of God's power and accurate order of natural world. It prevents human beings from superstitions and vain fantasies, directs his attention towards God and takes away his fear and distress and calm his heart. Salat al-Ayad must be performed in case there is an eclipse, solar or lunar, or an earthquake where one is present. Al-Ayad prayer is only obligatory when instances like eclipses can be seen through the naked eye. But if it's so partial that it can only be seen using instruments, or it's so transient and ends soon, it is not obligatory. Salat al-Mayyad, Salat al-Mayyad which literally translates to the prayer of the death is one of the burial rites to be given upon the death of a Muslim. It is wajib al-Kifai, meaning it is obligatory on every Muslim. But as soon as it's performed correctly by one of them, it remains no more obligatory on others. But if no one offers the prayer, everyone is a sinner. Salah for the obligatory tawaf of the Holy Kaaba. Qadha Salat of a father which is, as a precaution, obligatory upon his eldest son. Salat which becomes obligatory on account of higher wav or oath. Now, let's discuss about the clothes we're supposed to wear while offering the prayers. There are certain rules laid down concerning this. Number one, the clothes must be fahir, clean. But salat in Najah's clothes is invalid, batal. Number two, they must be muba, not ghasbi. Salat in ghasbi clothes is batal. Clothes purchased by money from which zakah or qums, when wajib was not given, is qasbi, and prayer with such clothes is batal. Number three, the dress shouldn't be a part of an animal whose meat is not halal. Therefore, the height of an elephant and such things are not allowed in salah. Number four, it shouldn't be a part of any dead animal. Meat, hide, and fat are not to be taken from a dead animal unless it is known that it was a dhibha, lawful killed animal. Therefore, leather belts or similar items are not allowed in salah. Number six, it is not allowed to pray in clothes which have the sweat of an animal which eats refuse of human beings. Number seven, for men, the clothes should be made from gold, whether it's pure gold or mixed, but there's no harm in keeping gold in pocket. Number eight, likewise men are not allowed to wear pure silk. The conditions to dress wajib for both men and women during salah includes covering only those parts of their body which they're supposed to cover ordinarily in the presence of a stranger. Hence, it is permissible for women to expose during salah that part of her face which is washed during wudu, her hands up to the wrist and her feet up to the ankles, both the back as well as the palms of hands and the soles of feet. For a man, it's wajib to cover the rear and the private parts, though better to cover the entire area between the navel and the knee. Now there are places where offering swala is makro. It is not like to pray in a dirty place or butchery, or in a place where fire is burning, or where there's a fire before a person, or where there's a photograph of human beings or animals, or with open Quran before him, or any open book. It is also makru to pray in a burial ground or on a grave, or behind a grave, or between two graves, or where there's a human being facing him. It is makru to pray in a bathhouse, hammam, or on roads, or facing an open door, or in a salty place, or in a room where someone is junub. 
It is certainly obligatory that a person, while offering salah, that he prays in the sequence prescribed by the Sharia, Tartib, and without an interruption or gap, Mawalat. Now let's talk about sajda or prostration. Sajda is allowed on anything that grows from the earth, provided it is from those things which are not eaten nor worn. Therefore, sajda is not allowed on clothes or on fruits or on vegetables or on such a thing that is not considered a part of earth, such as metals like gold and silver. The sajda is not correct on hide or skin because it doesn't grow from the earth, nor it is allowed on carpets made of wool, cotton, jute, and silk. Because wool and silk do not grow from earth, and cotton and jute are used in clothes. Sajda on paper is allowed. Highest profit has been given from performing sajda on the earth from a specific area in Karbala. That earth is called Khok Shafa. Ready-made tablets of which are available and are called Mohr or Torba or Sazdagaha in different languages. The Mohr must be clean. Dirty tablets are not allowed in prayers. Also, the size of Mohr should not be less than your own thumb. The obligatory sajda in the Holy Quran, upon reciting or hearing any of the following verses of the Quran, the performance of sajda becomes obligatory. Surah Sajda, verse number 15. Surah Fusilat, verse number 38. Surah Najm, verse number 62. And Surah Alaq, verse number 19. Anybody who recites the verse or listens to it must do sajda at the end of it. If one recites it while listening to it, he should do two sajdas. Moving forward, here's the most important part. Do you know the things they should avoid that can invalidate your prayers? Well, let's see. There are 12 things that render prayers void and they're called Mubtilat. Number one, while offering prayers is one of the necessary condition of prayer ceases to exist. For example, if the person concerned comes to know that the dress with which he's covered himself is an usurped one. Number two, while offering prayers, a person is faced intentionally or by mistake or owing to helplessness with a situation which make his ablution or goes to void. However, as regards a person who cannot control his feces or urine, his prayers will not become void if he acts according to the instruction detailed earlier in connection with ablutions. Similarly, if blood is discharged from the body of a mustahida, a woman in her undue menses while she's offering prayers, her prayers will not become void if she acts upon the orders relating to istihada. Number three, if a person holds his hands with the intention that it's part of prayers, his prayers will be nullified by doing so. In case, however, he doesn't do so with the intention but only as a mark of respect, he should, on the basis of obligatory precaution, re-offer the prayers. Number four, next thing which nullify prayers is that one says Ameen without the intention of supplication or considers it to be a part of prayers. In case, however, he utters this word only with the intention of supplication or by mistake or by way of taqayya, his prayers does not become void. Number five, the fifth thing which nullify prayers is that a person keeps his back, whether intentionally or by mistake, towards qibla or may move towards the right or left side of Qibla. If he intentionally turns from the direction of Qibla to such an extent that people do not say that he's facing Qibla, his prayers will become void even though he may not turn fully to the right or left side. Number six, one should avoid uttering a word consisting of one or more letters intentionally, though it may carry absolutely no meaning. Number seven, the seventh thing which makes prayers void is to laugh intentionally with voice. In case, therefore, a person laughs intentionally but without voice or by mistake with voice, what is apparent that his prayers is not invalidated. Number eight, one who intentionally weeps loudly in connection with worldly affairs, his prayers will be nullified. And the obligatory precaution is that he should not weep for worldly affairs, even without voice. However, if we weep with or without voice on account of fear of Allah or for the hereafter, there is no harm in it and in fact it is one of the best acts which a person performs. Number 9, one who performs an act which may destroy the form of prayers. For example, clapping one hands or jumping, his prayers will be nullified. And it is immaterial whether the act is done intentionally or by mistake. However, there is no harm in performing an act which does not change the form of prayers. For example, making a sign with one's hand. Number 10, eating and drinking. Number 11, if while offering the prayers one forgets in which unit he is at a point of time and he doubts about it such that he cannot remember and continues to remain in doubt, the prayer 
is broken, batal. Number 12, if a person decreases or increases the basic or non-basic elements arakan of the prayers either intentionally or inadvertently, for example, bowing into prostrations in one unit, his prayers will be nullified. However, increasing takbiratul haram by mistake does not nullify the prayers. So these were the mistakes one should avoid while offering his prayers. That is it for today. Inshallah, tomorrow we shall discuss another pillar of Islam, fasting in the same manner. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.